Ah, look at all this rain. Looks like we'll be exploring this city in style. Hey, I'm Todd Newton. Welcome once again to the Tattooed Traveler. We've got another exciting episode in store for you right now as I take you to the bustling heart of the city of Seattle. We're going to the world famous Pike Place Market and I want you to prepare yourself for all the sights and the sounds and yes, even the smells of this incredible marketplace that has really been captivating locals and tourists like us for over a century. This is Seattle, this is Pike Place Market, and this is the Tattoo Traveler. Like my dad used to say, a little rain never hurt anybody. And with an average of 152 rainy days every year, well, it's no wonder they call Seattle the Emerald City. All that downpour leads to its lush greenery. Seattle is home to several major tech companies. Microsoft is here. Amazon is here. They've all had a significant impact on the local economy as has our love for coffee. I'm telling you, there's a coffee shop on every corner. You have Cherry Street Coffee. Another favorite here in Seattle is Storyville Coffee. But I do believe I would be remiss, fellow traveler, if I brought you to Seattle and I didn't take you to the original, the very first Starbucks. Now in the early years, Starbucks primarily sold beans and equipment. That brewed coffee didn't come along till the 80s. Pat here will give you a little more history. Pat. Hi. What can you tell us? Well, I can tell you this is the first Starbucks in the world here at Pike Place Market. Pike Place Market started in 1907. There was a time when this market sold live pigs. Not anymore, too big. Um, now, the first Starbucks is right here. We started in 1971. For about seven years, we were the only Starbucks in the world. Now we have a thousand square feet in the store and the whole world shows up every day. Works great. We're doing good. The drinks are the same as other Starbucks. All the merchandise is unique. You can only get it here. Have a good day and happy holidays. Thank you, Pat. Same to you. Pike Place. That address should ring a bell if you're a regular at Starbucks like so many of us are. Today, Starbucks has over 30,000 locations, but this will always be the original right in the heart of the Pike Place market. As Pat mentioned, it's been around since 1907. The market is home to over 500 independent businesses. You'll find it all here. Leather, fresh produce, even shirts for perverts. But without question, one of the most famous attractions here is the Pike Place Fish Market. This is the spot you've been hearing about. This is where entertaining fishmongers throw fish to one another and engage with the customers. In keeping with the market's strong commitment to support local farmers and artisans, it does follow sustainable fishing practices and works with local fishermen. The tradition of throwing fish began in the 1980s when the fishmongers decided to have some fun and entertain the customers at the same time. And they even let me hop behind the counter to give it a try. Let me just say, it's been a long time since I played football back in high school, but I do remember you keep your arms out and when it hits your chest, you just pull it in, tuck it tight, right? So let's give it a shot. Danny is supposedly one of the best fish throwers here at the market. And here we go, yeah! These guys toss an average of 200 fish a day, and they're pretty knowledgeable about what they sell. You can find salmon, halibut, crab, shrimp, and a lot more here. But let me just see how my throwing arm is. Hold it with two hands. It's more of an underhand toss than anything else. Perfect. Now, just around the corner and down the stairs is the famous gum wall. You might be wondering how something like this originates. Well, it goes back to the early 1990s when people would stand in this alley waiting to get into a theater. They would just take the gum they were chewing and stick it onto the wall here. <laughs> the last time the gum wall was cleaned, 2015. Yeah, the Pike Place Market Preservation and Development Authority realized that the sugar 
from the chewing gum was beginning to damage the brick underneath. So to help preserve it, they steam cleaned the alley, which is about 50 feet long. The work took 130 hours. And believe it or not, they scraped away 2,350 pounds of chewing gum. And once the cleaning was done, visitors quickly began adding gum to the wall again. Visiting today, you'd never guess that it was ever cleaned at all. There's also a gum wall in San Luis Obispo, California, another in Greenville, Ohio, but this one is by far the most famous. Some people get kind of creative even trying to write their names with the gum. It's fun to look at, take a photo of, but you don't want to touch it. Now, if we head back upstairs, standing proudly beneath the Pike Place Market clock ever since 1986, is Rachel the Piggy Bank. And Rachel was placed here to raise money for the social service agencies here in the market, part of the Pike Place Market Foundation's mission to nurture a thriving market community. And I'm certainly happy to contribute. This 770-pound bronze behemoth is responsible for collecting about $20,000 each year for those agencies. Good for you, Rachel. Now, it's difficult to visit or even talk about Seattle without at least mentioning the significant impact this city has had on music, specifically the grunge movement, which hit in the late 80s, early 90s. Bands like Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Mother Love Bone, they all came from Seattle, and many of them found their start right here at the Central Saloon. This is Seattle's oldest saloon, and it's still kicking. It was established in 1892. It's been a cafe, a post office, even a brothel. Rich history, to say the least. That mirror is original. The bar top is original. And what really catches your eye as soon as you walk in is the tile on the floor. All original. And just think of some of the great stars that have walked across that tile. Jimi Hendrix, this man, Kurt Cobain. Grunge music was original. It was unpolished it was unapologetic and this stage was at the center of it all you ask any musician in seattle today if they're looking to make a name for himself or herself they will tell you that the central saloon is the place some even go as far as to say what abbey road and muscle shoals is to rock and roll so is the central saloon to grunge in these videos i always like to take you someplace off the beaten path, someplace really unique to grab a bite because we work up an appetite, right? And I also respect folks who make no promises and tell no lies. How's this for an advertisement? Probably <laughs> the best slices in town. I love it. Now, given its location right here on the Pacific Northwest coast, Seattle is obviously renowned for its fresh and delicious seafood, but there is an incredible Asian community here. Japan, Vietnam, China, all proudly represented. And the cuisine is second to none. I wanted to give you a little history. So I thought uh, in order to enjoy the finest cuisine that Seattle has to offer, I would bring you to Chinatown and to a restaurant that was opened back in 1935 by Grandpa Quan. It is now the oldest Chinese restaurant here in Seattle. And Tai Tung is still family run and operated. And man, has it done a great job of retaining all of its historic charm through the years. I wanted to come here because I saw Anthony Bourdain raving about Tai Tung on one of his visits to Seattle. And when a place is able to attract a loyal customer base of locals and tourists, for decades, generations even, you know they're doing something right. The menu here at Tai Tung specializes in Chinese American cuisine. All of your favorites, chow mein, sweet and sour pork. Here's Grandpa Quan's grandson, Harry, who runs the place now to tell you more. So your grandfather started this restaurant. Correct, yes, since 1935. 19th, and it's always been in the family. Yep. What is it like to be the oldest Chinese restaurant in Seattle? There are a lot of them. Oh, so uh, we, we feel good about it. 
You, you get see? a lot of famous people in here. Yeah, we have all different kinds, you know, see? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who's been in? Who are some of your favorite celebrities that have been in? All, all my customers. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the perfect answer, Harry, the perfect answer. Now, as we say around the Tattoo Traveler, a restaurant is only as good as the food it places before you. And this crispy, succulent, sweet and sour chicken with that homemade sauce, absolute home run. Thank you so much for joining me here on my trip to the great city of Seattle, Washington. I'm Todd Newton. And until we meet again a little further down the road, travel safely.